Hello, uh, Phil from Wargamer Online here, and welcome to a live look at uh, Shadow Spear, the new campaign box set for the Vigilus campaign, and the new starter set too. So let's just have 10 seconds to talk about the format of today's show. Um, it's a mixture of both sort of pre recorded and live, and what that means is I've had a look through the box. Um, I've filmed some sections where I've done the unboxing, which we're going to go through. And once we've had a look at those, I'm going to come back for any Q&A in the chat. So format is, you can see the chat um, if you are logged in to YouTube, which I sincerely hope you are, and subscribed, of course, then please add any questions in the chat. Um, um, and then what I can do is hopefully answer those questions if it's about units or if it's about, you know, some of the background or you want to closer look at one of the pieces on the sprues, then give me a shout and hopefully... Um, we'll all get to look at that. If not, there's a whole bunch of information for you to have a look at anyway as I go through the unboxing. I can see Ralph is in the chat already. Hey, Ralph, how are you doing? What's the weather like? It's insane over here. It's really blustery, really windy, and no doubt you're going to get a little bit of noise on the microphone, but um, hopefully everything will be okay. Right, without further ado... Hello, Red Cuffs. Thanks for reporting in, sir. Without further ado, let's get into the unboxing. Lifting the lid on Faith and Fury. <clears throat> okay, bases. Let's get them out of the way. Quite a lot of bases. Some big bases in there, which is all good. We've got some flying bits in there. Of course, some sprues on the top there. We have what appears to be pretty much, yes, that's the Chaos models without a doubt. I was just seeing if there was any mixed models. Nope. That's all Chaos. Obviously, the wonderful new Big Beastie. Um, we have, oh. Um, a Primaris sprue. Oh wow, look at that weapon. Right, we'll do close-up details. Chaos sprue, full size. Again, we'll revisit for close-up details. Two Primaris sprues, and they're identical, so there's some duplication models, no surprise. That kneeling pose is incredible. We will be revisiting that for sure. Three character sprues contained on here, beautiful detail, we've got the flying bases, let's get those out of the way, um, always get a bit of artwork now that they've inserted, they've started to insert and this helps I think two things, it protects the books, but also gives you a bit of cool artwork, no bad, it's quite a nice, nice image actually, 40k on the back, one, two, three books, Okay, let's have a quick look at that. We have um, the Codex Heretic Starters, Demonkin. Let's have a quick look at the format. Um, we've got Shaping of Abomination. So essentially an introduction section, and then you're into the data sheets from page 12 onwards. Uh, but as you would expect, a mini format, including the Lost and the Damned section, which is Legion Traits. Uh, psychic abilities, warlord traits and points values at the back, so nice little format, again we will be revisiting all of these in detail, this is just a quick flip through right now um, we've got um, again same format again for the uh, Space Marine Vanguard um, Agents of Terror, Defenders of Mankind Sons of the Primarch, so Chapter Tactics etc and Shadow Spear the book, which no doubt is going to be around background and missions and indeed it is so we have uh, Warzone Vigilus Into the Void, The War for Nem and Gast um, which of course is where all of this is based um, Games and Rules missions and then th six Crucible of War missions along with um, some kind of outro at the end nice got a sample chapter from Black Legion, new Aaron Dembski Bolden uh, book um if you haven't read any of his stuff you absolutely need to do so um, his books are amazing so i'm going to be reading through that core rules they're great by the way uh we have some uh, transfers yeah there's a few in there for the black legion and it's mainly for the, uh, the obliterators there as well but obviously um for the uh, vanguard as well and then instruction manual which is um you know detailed full color as ever we'll have a quick close look at all of those now
Okay, there you go. <laughs> uh, Mr. Frankie McShanky, no problem, man. I'm not for everyone. I get that. That's cool. Um, we're going to move on to um, looking at the sprues now. So, um, again, just a quick reminder. Like I say, this is a section between having a look at what's in the box and then open it up to your q and a so um any questions anything you want to know get that adding them into the um chat and uh, we'll go from there i'm being asked to speak up so i'll up the volume there you go mate back soon let's have a look at the demonkin sprue okay let's start by taking a close look at the models from uh, the demonkin uh, part of the box set We'll make a start with the master of possession um pretty impressive impressive model um as you can see made up of about eight parts here we are with the sprue um there's some incredible detail on this um you can kind of see the cloak here has got you know elements of all the chaos lords so we've got feathers in there from siege and the fur and then you've got bones kind of with the skulls from corn and yeah um pretty impressed with this model i love the the staff there and of course the power pack is insanely beautiful the skulls on the side here and the markings the flaming skulls just all incredible stuff the head absolutely ginormous is that a double option on the head no no no, no. that's a part of the where does that go oh of course it's the top of the this is the top of the uh, staff, isn't it? Which is pretty incredible. You know what, though? It'd make a great model swap out. Um, and, of course, as you can see, these are, um, you know, not push fit, but um, certainly not push fit. But, uh, you know, a single pose. It would be difficult to repose, as, the, you know, these are all done now where everything's all part of one. So you can see the front of the model contains all of the left leg, the top half of the right leg, part of the right arm no part of the left arm and as you can see then you're just sort of putting the lower leg onto here and fastening this entire front section to here but my what a model um how do you look at this scale um i'll tell you what these are one centimeter grid squares and as you can see this chap from base to shoulder height we're looking at what five centimeters 50 millimeters so this is a big old chap fantastic model absolutely love it let's take a look at some of the chaos space marines then so inside the set there was three sprues in total containing chaos um that's counting the character sprue as well so we also have this set which is predominantly the chaos space marines um, i'm just going to pick out some things that i like basically let's move that out of the way so you've got some idea um some of the things i like well Weapons, these chainsaws, absolutely amazing. Love it with a bladed piece on the front and the serrated bit there, and then the chain, uh, the chain teeth coming out of the back there as well. There's some lovely design cues on here. The armor here extending down, um, amazing stuff. Is that you know what? They almost look like Primaris, but they're not. That's actually the rear of Chaos Space Marines. Because if I was to flip them over, you can see. This, they're, um, they're detailing, but without a doubt now, these guys are um, uh, sort of grown on chaos power. So they're um, as big as the Primaris now, so the kind of upscale of Marines is complete. We've seen it with Death Guard anyway, so there's no new surprise there. Um, but what that enables them to do is to just cram so much detail into these models as well i'm just going to pick out that torso in fact you know what i'm actually going to zoom in a little bit more to do this um i think justice because it is amazing let's just call in right in on some of that detail look at that that is amazing what a chest piece you got the armor coming through but the rib cage over the top the mutated skull face that's an amazing bit of detail. The feet on some of these guys, look at these. The kind of feet slash armored foot with the separate toes, the demon toes coming out from there, the sort of mutated toes. This hand here, I'm just, I'm jumping all over the sprue, but that's because I'm just spotting so many nice bits of detail. And that's before we kind of get into, you know, one that was well publicized by Games Workshop. What a model. I think we saw that on some of the um, sort of the demon sneak previews that they do. Um, coming back to some of the heavier weapons. Oops, sorry about my computer beeping. 
Wow. Yeah, going to be lost for words because as ever with these, you start really picking up little bits of detail here. This uh, cloven foot with the little claws coming out the side of it there and the knee with the spikes. If I can show that at a slight angle there. These little bony protrusions from the knee joint. Ah, nobody is going to be disappointed with these models. And if they are, you are never going to be happy. It's as simple as that. Love these faces here. So this has obviously got the, the breathing mask on, but with the actual head showing and the top knot of hair, so synonymous with Black Legion as well. Wow, look at this. Even the inside of his arm has teeth. Oh man, that's incredible. Look at that foot there. Okay, so as you can see, these things are utterly laced with detail. Let's take one last look at what else have we got in here. So I'm just going through quickly flipping through some of the instructions. We've looked on that sprue, we saw some of the Greater Possessed. So can I bring that on board? So that was the Greater Possessed I was looking at there. We also have the Obliterators. Um which the obliterators look to be contained on the same sprue as excuse the camera work but we'll come back to this the venom crawler so let's check out the obliterators um i might just zoom back out a little bit for you wonderful people because these things are a little bit bigger as you can see we've got the obliter obliterators on here um these are big guys let's just do that scale again so even if I was to take, say, the bottom of the foot, the hunched shoulder, before they even get going, again, you're looking at least 50 mil. Um, big models with a wealth of detail on again. Um, just looking at some of the weapon options there. Is that a dual multi-melter? Looks like it, doesn't it? Amazing. Could be wrong, could be a flamer. No, I think that's a melter, isn't it? Um, what else have we got there? Big power claw there. Wow. That's bordering on um, dreadnought size. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, let's, uh, before I just move on, look at this look, weapon arm as well. Not quite sure what's going off there. Um, wow. Yeah. And big torn muscles. Obviously, there's another part to that there. Incredible. One last thing then, one last thing to look at on the Chaos side, and we have the Venom Crawler, so let's just have a look at some of the detail on this. And again, I'm going to pull, just zoom in a little bit more, try and give you something that you've not seen so you get to see the detail in a little bit more. All the pipe work under here is absolutely beautiful. And I love it when you see design cues, you know, well-established design cues. This little cap here with a vent, you see it on so many um, Admech, models and just any marine and imperium models so when they take those little design cues and repurpose them it's really nice because it just ties everything into the universe again opposite side if i can get that on camera for you again lovely little chain work with little eight starred symbols wrapped around the chain there loads of things for the model hobbyist and the painter to pick up on this spike rack for the back insane Ow, 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 gotta be so careful with that when it comes to packaging it, especially with that thinner joint there. But you know, worth it, worth it for the beautiful detail. And of course, these arms, which uh, you know, the legs have that uh, sort of almost a, a design reference back to the Onaga Dune crawler as well. So, no surprise to see those things in there as well. And again, I love that when they tie those design cues across whilst it's um. You know a much weirder and wonderful beast it's it's clearly not a, a um, um an onager dune crawler you know this thing i think has only got actually it does have six legs the front two though are bladed so that's the bladed weapon if i can find an example of one i'm sure i was just looking at one a second ago there's the bladed one and then we have the smaller front leg and then the larger rear leg, which actually the panel there is separate. So that's the panel that goes onto it. What a model. What a model. Right. Maybe we should move on to um, the Primaris. 
Hello. Right. OK, what I'm going to do then, we've had one quick question there. So Ralph is saying they are easy fit, not push fit. Yes, correct. There are no push fit pins. So I know they're not terribly popular with people. Um, and, you know, they can cause problems in terms of the fit, although they make the overall construction a lot easier. They are the easy build, basically. So there is only one way of building these things. The arms position in a single position. You can't go wrong. What we're going to do is jump in now and have a look at the Primaris model. or not as the case may be because we seem to have a problem okay i tell you what we're going to do is we'll come back to the primaris models <laughs> do you assemble yet uh do they need a lot of green stuffing uh, no i've not assembled yet actually i will be doing that over the weekend so i might actually revisit and do another show um what i'm going to do now is jump into a little bit of talk about the uh campaign books so Let's start by looking at the Shadow Spear book itself. So this is the um, the mission pack. Um, inside here we've got, as I mentioned, the introduction, the War of Nemengas, which is where it's all based, and six Crucible of War um, missions representing um, the the mission that the um, Shadow Strike, um, Shadow Spear, sorry, the Shadow Spear Task Force uh, were were um, uh, assigned. Some context then, Vigilus, if you don't already know about this, this is the focal point of the war and the Nihilist system. So everything's gone wrong, it's all gone terrible. We've got the Vigilus system in the middle of all of this with Kalgar essentially trying to defend it. This has become the focal point uh, for the Black Legion where their attacks are going. Um, of course, Vigilus is not just a planet, it's a system. Nihil um, we have the, you're going to have to excuse me, Nemengast, um, the planet is uh, essentially a mining planet on the outskirts of the system, surrounded by asteroids, uh, minerals, etc., etc. It goes quiet. Um, Kalgar puts together a strike force uh, led by Captain uh, Ak Akron, uh, Akran, Akran, Ak Akran, 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 Akran. Oh. I wish they'd just make these things easy. Akaran, um, and he's a uh, second command, um, ultramarine second company, and he's also uh, joined by librarian Maltist. There you go, that's how you name a character. Maltist, nice and easy, like the Maltese parrot. Um, he's the master of psychic disciplines. They're leading this uh, strike force, Shadow Spear, um, to, uh, who are tasked with investigating this industrial world and while it's gone quiet. When they get there, it's a mess. Everything's gone terribly wrong. Chaos Gods have moved in. The Black Legion's moved in. Even worse, the Warpsmiths have moved in. They've created these flesh factories and they're producing possessed super soldiers and war engines, the Demonkin. Um, it's all, you know, a terrible mess. This is a strike force. They are not um, uh, an entire invasion force. What can they do? they can essentially go on a campaign of sabotage and assassination across the world to basically disrupt as much of this as possible. That's their job until, as and when, an invasion force is possible. It's got some beautiful artwork at the start of the book. Um, uh, I think, you know, showing not only the amazing models that you get within this box set, uh, and there are some incredible amazing models, you've seen the sprues, but also put in the context of this wonderful terrain now that Games Workshop are producing, absolutely amazing. There's some background uh, information on Warzone Vigilus. There's Kalgar, um, you know, taking command of the entire theatre, um, sending out these strike forces, essentially these vanguard strike forces, with the intention of rallying the besieged forces. So obviously the vanguard are not just there in the context of assassination and disruption, but, you know, if they find surviving Imperial forces, it's to rally them, bring them together, form them into a cohesive fighting force again and start to push back. 
a um, bit more background, uh, both around what's going off inside uh, the defense of Vigilus uh, overall, but also some information on the industrial world of Nemengas. So it's the outskirts of the system, as I mentioned. It's mining surrounded by comments. Um, aside from the system cat um, capital, it says Nemengas was perhaps the most valuable asset in the vicinity. So a really important thing, as you know, in any war zone, um, the ability to, to build, replenish, etc. Pretty important stuff. A little bit more information about the war for Nemengas. What that essentially does is go into the characters and talk about the, the, the task force. Uh, it gives you the narrative behind the missions. And then, of course, we are into the campaign games, starting from behind enemy lines. And, of course, you can go into all-round defense, target priority, vanguard assault, dark ritual, burn and despoil. So depending on how who wins the mission, you go on to the next mission. So if it's a win for the Imperium, target and opportunity comes up but if then uh, the demon can win you go on to dark ritual the winner of the previous mission has d6 extra command points to spend on stratagems i love the fact that this is an incredibly tight campaign pack six missions set up in a way of a win lose drop down um leading to three uh, uh outcomes if you like so you know you're essentially playing three games to get you to an end point and you can play this over and over and over again you know as each one sort of goes down this route or you could just work through them in order but i love the idea that they've presented you with this right from minute one um makes it a genuine little mini campaign pack into the crucibles of war, we've got things like behind, uh, you know, this is the behind enemy lines. So let's just go for that first mission, which is the one I'm going to focus on. And then we'll move on to the other books. So behind enemy lines is indeed the introduction mission. As you can see, you've got the attacker's deployment zone, the defender's deployment zone. You've pretty much got most of the table to go with. Um, the uh, objective, if you like, at the start of the defender movement space, blows both players roll a d6 for each sentry model in order chosen by the defender. Player who rolls the highest can move the model the distance indicated on their d6 direction. So you're using um, these little custom rules in there. Um, uh, what you're trying to avoid is an alarm being raised as it goes through. We've got things like command points for silence weapons. If you use this stratagem in one of your units, make a shooting attack immediately before the attack is re resolved. The alarm is only raised if the target is hit but not slain by the attack. So this is essentially how creepy you are, how sneaky you are at the start if you like, of the battle. And the victory conditions are simply this. At the end of the battle, the attacker rolls a d6 and adds the number of models that have infiltrated past enemy lines to score. If the result is 10 or more, the attacker wins a major victory. Otherwise, the defender wins a major victory. Two, four stratagems, two for each of the players, silence weapons, blend of the shadows, uh, over on the demonkin, suspicions raised, and they knew, uh, they knew we were coming. So this is a defender's stratagem again. Um, I love it. I think it's fantastic. These are sort of one-off little missions you can play. And as I've said, depending on who wins, loses, leads to the next mission. So here we have with all-round defense, as you can see, you're surrounded. Um, and then a target of opportunity played on a, a smaller table, a 4 before table. Brilliant. Okay, going to leave it at that um, because, like I say, each one of the missions contains its own custom stratagem. They are pretty cool. And then you've got a section in here which is a war without end. Um, and again, talking about... Um, the two patrols clash in the ruins of ZR City. So... Um, You've got these uh, essentially an open play. Talks about open play missions at the end there. Anyway, right. That's enough about that book. Let's have a look at the codex. Okay, as before, let's start with um, the character models because um, they're pretty damn cool. We have, assuming I can find which one's which, um, <laughs> the captain in fact, myself. That is going to be this one. Of course it is. Okay, uh, it took me a second to find it. Again, I'm going to zoom in because these models absolutely deserve the sort of close-up view so you can see all of the detail, all of the wonderful detail on here. Lost my little pointer already. Um, oh, wow. Check it out. I've not made you dizzy already. Um, check out the chest plate. Little ropes running across the purity seal kind of stamp. And this ribbed 
chest, uh, rib stomach section there with the fiber bundles. Wow, there's so much incredible detail on here. Wonderful little laurels on the shoulder plate there. Of course, they've not got the big pauldrons because the Phobos armor is a lighter specification armor. And there's some detail of the head there. Let's turn that sideways for you. Hopefully we'll then tell you what. I'm going to take this background now because it does help, I think, with you being able to see the details. So here we go, back again with a face. That's definitely a face that you want to mount that on a cocktail stick and spend a decent amount of time getting that head just right before you pop it finally on the model. Um, as you can see, the armor from the back. And of course, the, the iconic Phobos armor now that... You know, has the community a little bit divided? Personally, I'm a fan. I'm okay with it. I like it. Um, Jack, you know, he's not so much. He kind of likes the pauldrons, but I kind of like to see the, the different design cues creeping in now, and it's, it's okay with me. More for the hobbyist. If you don't like them, you know, swap the legs out. <laughs> but I like it. Okay, cloak here. Cloak looks like it connects up in two parts. So, yes, you've got a connection down here. And a connection across there so that's always tricky um, in terms of making that join look great just make sure there's a nice good coat of plastic glue as you seal those two together and, and file down and it won't be a problem what else yeah, a little bit of a, a little bit of a servo screw there popping around looks like he's carrying a screen for him as well just going hey boss you know star trek discovery latest episodes out check it out I think that's what I'd be telling him. Maybe some other tactical advice as well, but other than that, just keeping up on Netflix. That's amazing. Love the model. Fantastic. Right, let's move on to the next one. We have the Librarian in Phobos armor. So here we go. This is actually a little bit bulkier than um, the Captain for sure. Um, and this is all about this incredible cloak and Librarian helmet backplate thing um yeah wow this is a painter's dream all of this uh, cloth work i'm actually starting um a uh, ultramarine army so i'm doing ultramarines i've got gilliman i've been collecting uh, the conquest magazine um and i decided actually this is my starting point for my uh, ultramarine army i am going to start with the shadow spear box and build on it from there, from the models that are coming out through Conquest magazine as well. So expect to see more ultramarine nonsense on the channel as well. I'm just finalizing my Gene Steeler cult, so it's brilliant to be, this is brilliant timing for me to be able to move on to that. Look at the size of that sword. That's incredible. Again, these are one centimeter square, so this is a yeah, <laughs> 40 millimeter sword, something like that. It's not the kind of thing you want to be a standard guardsman just wandering around and getting bonked on the head with. Absolutely. Okay, and as you can see, this wonderful chess piece. Well, I'm sorry, off camera there, I do apologise. This wonderful chess piece here with the stitching across the front, all the cloth work. And this is what I quite like about this Phobos armour. It makes the ankle joints and stuff slightly more dynamic. I think it allows for this pose. And, you know, whilst I don't expect these um, great big giants to be super stealthy, I do like the idea that it makes them more agile, and that's the whole point. It's their agility that I think is improved rather than their stealth. Um, you know, so that's that's how I'll rationalise it in my mind. Love this cloth work over the top of the power pack again, and of course, no uh, librarian is complete without a book. Um, that looks to be, I think it's probably Aaron Dembski Bowden. Uh, greatest greatest 40k novels all uh, an omnibus edition there awesome just checking out the uh, cloaked head as well just incredible I absolutely love that there's some great detail around the eyes I hate painting eyes but I will have a damn good go at that right what else have we got we got so much on the primaris one I'm just going to pull the camera back out because we've got two of these sprues so let's just have a quick look at that now inside here um somewhere in there by the way is a lieutenant on phobos armor and i've got a feeling that's on the large sprue so um and the infiltrators and then we've got well this will be the eliminators on this sprue 
So here we have the Eliminators with their rifles and their wonderful bits of cloak. And this is um, one of the things that I know Games Workshop pulled out um, during their pre-release content where they were looking at things like the uh, hoods, the hooded heads, which I believe there are spares. So they've given you choices, um, but having these anyway in your spares box. But yeah, I'm going to use them is the truth because I want these to look dramatically different. So I'll be using the hooded ones, but even so, having the option of having spare hooded heads within the collection. Um, yeah, the detail, I think people are pretty much, uh, as you would expect, fully understand what's going off now with Primaris Marines. But I'm just bringing this weapon up again. It feels like this is one of the things that have divided the community a little bit. I'm going to go out there personally. I like them. So this is the suppressor weapon. Um, and I think it's some kind of accelerated auto cannon. I can't quite remember the name of it now, but it's <laughs> it's incredible. Um, it just gives you a sense of scale again. So what's that? That's um, let's line it up there. Thirty, sixty. Well, okay, it's about fifty-five millimeters long. That weapon. Wow. Yeah. Nice. Um, okay, let's move on to one of the other spoofs. Ah, before I do. I just want to bring out that pose. You get two of those. Um, I am super pleased at that. I love this uh, sort of serrated padded knee on the right hand side, on the left hand side. Is that carried through on some of the other ones? I'm just trying to find. No, that's interesting. Sorry about flipping the camera around. I'll bring it back to the point I was making. It's got like a little serrated padded kneecap there. That's interesting, or at least a grippy one for kneeling down. Who knows? Love it. Anyway, fantastic. What a great pose. Just goes to show how powerful these models are now. They're just huge beasts. It really does, for me, um, primaris law to one side. And again, another place that's potentially got the community a little bit divided, or at least the vocal community. But for me, um, these really do feel like the sort of titans of war that they're meant to be now absolutely love them if nothing else um i love uh, the way the marines have done uh, in terms of their development okay two of those on sprue as i mentioned so let's just go back out a bit because we've got the final one here so i feel that covered both uh, that sprue clearly contained both um the uh, some infiltrators uh, and eliminators rather and suppressors so i think this must be uh, a sprue that mainly contains the infiltrators by the looks of things although actually you know what i take it back because one of the suppressors is on here as well so maybe they're just all completely mixed up across, across the sprue because as you can see the suppressor's jump pack is there as well, isn't it? Or that could even be the lieutenant who indeed has the pack. So somewhere in here there is a lieutenant on Phobos armor and I'm looking for a part number to see. So A52 is indeed part of the lieutenant on Phobos armor. So just to give you a reminder of what that model looks like again, there you go. Um, so somewhere contained on this sprue again Tell you what, let's get right back in. Wow. Just to give you an idea of the dynamism of some of those poses. A little bit too far for the camera there. So I'm loving this. I'm loving these sort of tight bend legs that really work well. Okay, wonderful bits of detail. Plenty of underfoot base detail as well, if I can get that back on camera. Stuff like that, I think, really adds to the, the individuality of each model. And in fact, that is, by the looks of things, I take it back. I was going to say that is actually the leg of the lieutenant, but it's not. So that's just one of the infiltrators. How cool. Okay, that's the spruce covered. Let's move on to talking around the books. Okay, so there you have it. There's the Primaris um, sprues. I've got a couple of questions in the chat, which I want to just visit before I go on to having a quick look at the codexes. So um, we had um, in there, let me just have a quick look, um, the <laughs> discussion of the suppressor weapon um, and the fact it's going to produce some kick. Um, let's just have a quick look at the stats on that, actually, before we jump on. So this is the suppressor quad, squad. The accelerator autocannon is kicking out 48-inch range. 
It's a heavy two, strength seven, minus two AP, doing two damage. There's some really nice rules to it. The suppressing fire rule here, which uh, says basically, if this unit destroys an enemy model in your shooting phase with its accelerator auto cannon, the destroyed model's unit cannot fire Overwatch until the end of the turn. So it's a really nice sort of uh, um, option to remove Overwatch before then charging units in. Uh, and whilst within the context of this box set, it will have relevance, but against factions like Tau, etc., um, that's pretty impressive. The uh, you know an ability to shut down Overwatch when you have combat units in your force, I think, is fantastic. Um, also in there, we had, you know, is the Phobos armor the new Mark 10 uh, standard now? No, it's not. Um, you know, there was an interview uh, on the Voxcast where they talked about where Phobos armor fits in, and essentially the Mark 10 armor is seen as, um, a, you know, a composite build, if you like. Um, it's not that you can take pieces off and replace them with pieces, but from a manufacturing point of view, that's basically what's happening. So whilst the arm brace may be exactly the same, the lower leg changes out for the Phobos armor, um, you know, so it's not so bulky, it's not so powerful, but it's also more agile. Um, so no, this is just essentially for the Vanguard uh, detachment and these, uh, sorry, wrong word, Vanguard units. Um, who need faster, quicker armor for infiltrating and combat strike. Um, doo -doo -doo, I think that may have covered a couple of chats that we have, other than Mike Thomas. Hey, Mikey, how are you doing? It's good to see you back in the chat. And uh, a little point in there saying... Um, you're hoping uh, this box set might just bring you back to the hobby. Nice. Let's get into the codexes and uh, have a quick flip through and back for questions. Remember, if you want to ask a question, just put at Wargamer Online, put it in the chat, and I'll get. The last short section then is to look at both the codexes. And really, what I'm going to do is a very, very brief look of these because what I'm going to do is go back through the uh, chat of the live show and see what questions you have about the forces in a hope to answer your questions. So, here we are Vanguard, Space Marines. Each one follows exactly the same format. We have this introduction, um, the, the force introduction, which is between page four and 12, and then you're essentially into the data sheet. So just going through that. As I talked a little bit about Vanguard Space Marines and what they mean, they're an elite reconnaissance troop. You know, they're sent ahead. Their, their job is to strike fast, strike hard, uh, but ultimately they are not an invasion force. So assassination, disruption, uh, sabotage these are the remits of the vanguard um, you know uh, uh, again also the fact that they can be used to track down uh, disparate forces that have become separated and rally them and bring them together um, so we've got all of this in uh, you know uh, information about them including the iconography that comes with an infiltrator squad reaver squad eliminated squad and sp suppressor squad so you can see the pauldron information the Phobos armor has got the smaller shoulder pads. It's not just about the legs, but you've got the smaller shoulder pad and the lighter uh, chest area and stomach area. We have uh, coloring for them, Dark Angels, White Scars, Space Wolves, Imperial Fists, looking great by the way, uh, Blood Angels, Iron Hands, uh, Salamanders, and Raven Guard. So a little bit on the color schemes and how they work. Um, overview of the models themselves and we've looked at the sprues but it's so nice to see these things built isn't it um yeah personally i like these i for me with these models it's always been around these new kind of bases the the hook up around the back and stuff i think personally what i might do is have them kind of leaping off bits of terrain and those kind of things one i think they're more stable and two i think you can do more sort of dynamic poses with them than I don't know, there's something about that base for me, the, the flying base, doesn't quite do it for me, it's pretty fragile, but I'll try it out though, because I have to say, I haven't built any like that. Um, I am going to, as I mentioned earlier, going to be starting my ultramarine force with this. I love this, by the way, infiltrator marksman with bulk carbines, a um, little bit of a, a grenade going off there, um, fantastic. Wow, loving it, bolt sniper rifles so cool 
and then we're into the data sheet. Um, obviously, you, if you've played the game, you're absolutely familiar with that. If you've never played the game before and this is your first look at any 40k game, this gives you an understanding of how the data sheets are made up and what detail it contains. Um, we're into keywords now, just as you would in a full codex. So yes, they shall know no fear. We have, um, you know, things like uh, if you decide Captain Phobos Army is drawn from Dark Angels chapter, then the Captain keyword keyword is replaced with Master. Interestingly enough, Space Wolves becomes Wolf Lord, etc. So again, they've they've actually um, non codex compliant characters. I really like what they've done there. I'm just bringing that down a bit so you can see it a bit better. And then we are into the much publicized data sheets. At that, I'm going to stop. We're going to have a similar look again at the Demonkin, and then we will go over to Q&A. So spend less time introducing the format for the Demonkin one. There's really no need at this point. You've seen it now. So we've got this introduction telling us all about um, the Demonkin, um, their path to chaos. And how they've they really you know they've really lost it the the you know fans of the dark gods um they've been in this thing for a long time um this is their thirteenth attempt is it thirteenth I think it's pretty much the thirteenth time they've uh, had a go at this and um that's certainly uh you know if you follow the uh the the um the background of this then uh, all of those 13 uh, attempts all of the previous 12 attempts have been to uh, achieve certain objectives which have made this final massive push um uh, possible um and let's let's face it chaos have had a great deal of success lately um i'm loving this by the way alpha legion iron warriors night lords word bearers red corsairs the scourge the purge and the flawless um what do i like about these the most um because i've always seen the black legion as kind of black legion if you know what i mean um so you know you paint the black and with gold trim um which is cool by the way and maybe the case what happens here anyway but it's nice to see that um you know they're encouraging people if you like to also show if you like the origins or at least they're favored uh, uh, uh dark gods so of course we've got um the red corsairs um uh formerly the red scorpions chapter all gone terribly wrong obviously a little bit cornate um we've got um here you know the thousand suns uh very much zeech uh um but still you know so we've got some zeech sim sim symbols etc but still very much uh across all four um gods into the uh actual models beautiful 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 um we had a look at them these obliterators are huge um the captain is ginormous in fact it's all just fantastic isn't it i absolutely love this little venom and crawler definitely my favorite probably the first thing that gets painted i uh, might even do a little sort of airbrushing slash um pen tutorial on that because i do think with these details if you want to get them army painted quick you know using things like the the little um, pens to do the metallics and stuff it's a hobby hack it's very good it works really quick and on these raised detail it's perfect so maybe that's something we can have a look at back into the data sheet introduction um back into the keywords talks a little bit um how th that works again so you know how the mark of chaos applies etc demonic ritual so what happens when your um uh, the demonic ability is not an ability that any unit in this codex has but it is an ability that chaos character can use to summon a certain demon units da -da 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 -da. anyway off it goes and then we're into the data slates and again going to stop there um and open it to a q a and hopefully we've got some questions we can look at if not i'm just going to start flipping through these things and talk through them myself so um, there you go um finally through the books um i'm seeing some uh, great stuff in the chat chapter master the uh, <laughs> chapter master valrak is in the chat says nothing says stealth like an auto cannon um yeah uh i mentioned in uh, the book uh in the mission book we talked a little bit about the uh, behind enemy lines and the stratagems involved I'm just going to come back to that because I think it's worth revisiting on that point around the uh, absence of stealth from auto cannons. Um, we've got, uh, you know, the the stratagems that you play. The mission is basically based around the the idea that there are sentries. Those sentries can raise an alarm. If you raise an alarm, it, it goes under the following conditions: if a model from the attacker's army fires a ranged weapon 
or manifests a psychic power. A model from the attacker's army attacks a sentry in the fight phase but fails to kill them. A model from the attacker's army is spotted by a sentry. A model is spotted within, uh, if it's within spotting range. And it goes on to kind of describe that. Uh, uh, you know, and what happens as a consequence of that? They do allow a stratagem for silenced weapons. Um, using this stratagem, when one of your unit makes a shooting attack immediately before the attack is resolved, the alarm is not only raised if it's the target is hit, but it, it, but not slain by the attack. So um, that allows you, if you like, to silence your weapons, is the idea. But, you know, <laughs> it's an auto cannon. I, I'm not quite sure how much of the noise you can take out on... Um, you know, but, you know, maybe they're fighting in, uh, you know, zero atmosphere and the noise doesn't carry. It's possible, isn't it? They could be fighting in the void. They could be on one of the moons, uh, uh, the mineral moons surrounding the planet. So, um, you know, it's your hobby. Make it work. Uh, but, Mr. Valrak, thank you very much for joining us anyway. That did give me a good chuckle halfway through the show there. Um, we've got some questions here. Has Primaris Vanguard now made Reavers obsolete? Um, where do they fit in the picture game-wise? I think the only thing I had to say on that was um, going back to um, the Vanguard forces, the Agents of Terror. Let's just bring this back up again. As you can see, it we have the uh, uh, Infiltrator Squad, the Reaver Squad, um, and uh, Eliminator Squad, and a Suppressor Squad. So Reavers are indeed mentioned they are seen as the close support aspect you have battle line fire support and fire support from the eliminators and the suppressor squad so reavers are mentioned in that context context and if we go along to the data slate you will see we've got the characters but more importantly the infiltrator squad listed over here along with the suppressors and the eliminators so they fit. They fit as part of a, uh, the units that are equipped with Phobos armor. Um, I hope that helps. Um, what else have we got? Uh, uh, Dave says excellent presentation. By the way, for a Saturday morning. Yeah, it's a Saturday morning. I will wake up, but probably in about an hour's time. But you know, I still thought this would be a more fun way of doing it rather than just pre-recording everything. Um, Alpha Legion are not Chaos Space Marines. They are just simply misunderstood. Well, if they are, they're, they're, they're um, giving a cunning uh, ruse to everybody there. Um, do, 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 Amit also said, finally update Chaos fans have wanted for ages. Gorgeous models, absolutely. Uh, was there no World Eaters color scheme in that mini codex? Give me a second and we'll check it out. Um, yeah, I've got a feeling... Um, you know what? It's no good looking at the Space Marine Vanguard book, is it? So give me a second. I don't think there was, was there? Um, apologies for the page noises. We'll get there in the end. Ah, here we go. Chaos Space Marines. Let's just see what we've got in here then. So back to uh, the book. And I may have to zoom out a little bit. But you know what? I will leave it zoomed in because we can focus on each of those factions a little bit closer. So here we go. We have um, the Alpha Legion and Iron Warriors, uh, Night Lords, and Word Bearers. So um, Red Corsairs, I suppose, uh, based on uh, simply the Red Scorpions. And then we have um, the uh, clearly based on Thousand Suns, uh, Death Guard, sort of. Um, and of course, they will be Empress children over here, won't they? The Flores Holes. So the Death Guard have that Nurgle sort of um, tint to them some question around you know i was discussing with jack about what we do with his death guard whether he goes on to paint these in the sort of continuation the less mutated death guard marines or not some debate what do you guys think in the chat also a couple more questions then um do 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 what are we alpha legions finally uh, we've covered that one frankie shanky are there any stratagems in the mini dexes frankie i will do my best find out for you so we have legion traits oh um right okay then in which case uh, whilst there are legion traits and i'm just going to double check this before we double uh, before i absolutely commit to this i don't think there are any stratagems above and beyond the ones that are contained within the mission so we have um, a malefic discipline so um you know just Hold on a second, sorry. So there are psychic powers in there. There's some cute ones in there, you know, Cursed Earth, 
um, you know, improving uh, the invuln saves by one, infernal power giving you reroll hits and wounds within six inch of the sorcerer. There are some battle traits in there, but no, once so that we're done that, we're into point values. So the only thing you've got in terms of stratagems, just to come back to it then, as I mentioned in behind enemy lines, there is two stratagems for each faction or rather for defender and attacker, but in these instances, we know who the defender is, we know who the attacker is. Let's just have a look at some more all-round defense. We have Dawn Assault, use this stratagem at the start of the first, fourth, and seventh battle round until the end of the battle round. Subtract one from hit rolls made for attacks with ranged weapons that target enemy models more than 12 inch away from the firing model. So, you know, representing it being low light, uh, of course, having an impact on super powerful dudes uh, so there you go no the stratagems are only contained within the missions um doo -doo -doo. dave says if you can paint blood angels you can paint world eaters well there you go um real pros paint white scars smoothly uh thin coats mate that's what it's all about joel says can you explain quickly how the obliterators work now with regards to squad size I'll do my best. Um, obliterators. We have um, unit contains one obliterator can include up to two additional obliterators. Uh, power rating of six plus uh, per model. Each obliterator armed with uh, flesh metal guns and crushing fists. Any options on this one? They come with a teleport strike, flesh metal guns. When this unit is chosen to shoot in the shooting phase or fires overwatch, roll three D3, one after the other, to determine the characteristics of the unit's flesh metal guns for the shooting phase or overwatch. The first roll is added to six to determine the strength. <laughs> the second roll is the AP, and the third roll is the damage. So, yeah... That, that's a mechanic and a half, isn't it? Um, it's going to affect the pace of the game. Um, uh, uh, low be tired if you've got like 20 of those on the table. But saying that, still quite interesting. They do indeed also have the teleport strike. So essentially, they're one in uh, obliterator. You can have up to three in the unit. Roughly on points, how much are we looking at for obliterators? Uh, points per model. Well, before you start sticking things in there, does not include war gear. You're at 115 on a base for war gear. So... Flesh metal guns coming in at ah, they're coming in at free, so you can have some fun with those for sure. But it's an expensive unit if you go for three of them. Uh, do, 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 do. Right, what have we got on here? So I would rather obliterators have been redone. Those old models uh, were horrible. I did not buy them. So silenced auto cannon. The suppressor would have the size of a rhino. <laughs> Silence auto cannon is an oxymoron indeed. Red Cuffs, is this the next 40k starter set? And what else do you think will come in the next 40k edition launch? Um, it's certainly a complementary starter set. It is not the only starter set. That's the word I'm getting from various people I've spoken to. Um, uh, even if you were to take, for instance, uh, how Games Workshop are positioning this when they've uh, launched it today, they've put Shadow Spear as available separately, but you can buy that and Dark Imperium side by side. Um, I think it's just seen as an alternative starter set. You know, they're just broadening the factions in the starter set, basically. You know, maybe you'll see, uh, you know, maybe Dark Imperium will eventually go out of production and you'll see them start to disappear off the shelves. But right now, it is a side by side release. Um, what else have we got in here? Red Cuffs, we've covered that. Will there be a ninth edition? You know, I, we've covered this on one of the Monday Musing chats, really. I, I think you'll see 8th edition evolve as you do with these incremental lease releases. But like uh, Age of Sigmar, we did see a 2nd edition Age of Sigmar. So no doubt, I think we will eventually see a 9th edition release. But I will um, be surprised if you see an overhaul of the system. Uh, Jervis Johnson in one of the Voxcasts did joke about D20s at one point. But um, hey, I'm not starting that rumour. Um, <laughs> where are we now? Dave says, oh, there's a few questions here. Vague promise was to not do any new edition, but rather update the old codices with new ones and publish updates in chapter of proven book. I think that's the case, but there's still, you know, like I say, within Age of Sigmar, there was like a version shift, wasn't there? 
but it wasn't an unrecognizable version shift. I think you're just seeing, you know, it's like software releases where you've got, you know, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, and then eventually they do a 2.0, and it's where they've wrapped everything together and just rationalized a few things and, and creeped it forward, and it's seen as a as a major release, but, you know, still basically recognizable. Um, do, do, do what else we got? Ralph says there will eventually be one. I think we'll pull together all of the various modifications. Is this the new start? If this is the new starter set, and that is okay. Uh, Frank Storm says hello. Um, Amit says is Shadow Spear the new 40k starter set? I think I've covered that one. So yes and no. As I said, they're side by side. On the website, they sell the Dark Imperium and Shadow Spear bundle. So there you go. Ralph is already covering this in the chat. Um, Senior G says, how many attacks on the Venom Crawler? Um, cool. Yeah, I can do that. Um, da -da 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 -da. What have we got here? Venom Crawler. Um, so weapon skill 4, ballistic skill 4. Um, strength is starred out, but we'll come back to that in a second. We have uh, a star on the attacks as well. So uh, full wounds is four attacks, um, three to five, three attacks, and one to two, two attacks. So descending down from four attacks. You've also got the excruciated cannon, the eviscerating claws, which are coming in at strength plus two, uh, minus three AP, uh, damage three. So those claws are pretty, pretty horrific. Um, and just to say, strength plus two, you are starting off as a base of strength six on full wounds. So this is strength eight attacks, uh, four attacks at, you know, um, plus two, uh, sorry, uh, four attacks at strength eight with a minus three AP and three damage. Um, hitting on fours is, is pretty impressive. Let's just see if there's anything you can do stats wise. Um, you've also got the soul flare tendrils, um, which each time the bearer fights, it can make two additional attacks with this weapon. So there you go, four base with two additional attacks from the tendrils, which are coming in at a minus two AP with two damage. So it is a pretty beasty thing when it comes to combat. Um, just having a look at uh, the base value of this, you're looking at 130 ish. So obviously, yeah, uh, that's your base. Uh, Devourer of Souls, each of your turn the model gate regains one lost wound in addition at the end of each fight phase in which this model destroyed an enemy model the model regains one lost wound so this thing is going to sit around for a while starting at a base of 10 wounds with an extremely st strong mechanic to regain those wounds um, and if this model is reduced to naught wounds then a D uh, roll a d6 basically on a 5 up it explodes and it's a 6 inch bubble dishing out d3 mortal wounds so it's got some real kick to it that thing that's going to be interesting to see on the table um, two, let me see if I can just can catch up with the so that was Senior G hi there by the way uh, Joel Davison do you know what the points value is for each force is um, no I've not had time to calculate what the points value would be across each force sorry about that what I can do is look that up and I'll put a, a little summary up on the, the Facebook group if you like sorry about that Joel Dave um, I think that's a comment on uh, Age of Sigmar uh, second edition rules were released uh, but, uh, but all the battle tomes stayed fixed yes um, I had to kiss goodbye to Skaven Pestilence battle tome uh, that's just a comment around the, the, the stuff moving forward uh, Andras, Andre Andre I'm going to go with Andre kind of uh, and apologies if I'm getting your name wrong but hello from Poland well hello hello from a uh, very windy and cold UK uh, John Harrison says, hi, are the gun barrels drilled already? Looking at this on the website, they are. Um, wow, good point. Let's see what we can find. Um, okay, can I do this? Yeah, I can do this. We're going to have to zoom in a little bit. Not all of them is going to be the answer, and that's zooming out, not in. So if we were to take... <laughs> it's going to get there in the end. Let's just have a look at that sniper rifle. Is that going to focus? There you go. That is definitely... Um, okay, come on. You can focus now. You can do this. Let's just put my hand behind it and see if we'll... So that is certainly not drilled out. As you can see, that's a solid barrel. Um, the... Uh, okay, there is a slot on the auto cannons, but uh, not... <laughs> not a hole. I'm going to have to try and align this book better. Um, what else have we got in there? Okay, I'm wondering which models you've seen... 
where you've seen drilled out barrels. So, um, yeah, certainly not on the sniper rifles. The auto cannons have a slot. Um, I'm just trying to find out. No, I'm seeing, I'm seeing models attached um, on the end of the barrel, so there's no way those are drilled out. Um, maybe you're talking about some of the larger models or the character models. Having a quick look now, looking for the, say, the obliterators. Um, you know what? The obliterator model arms are in two sections. So let me just see if I can find something here. In which case, uh, okay. It looks like there's an end piece for the uh, cannon there, if I can get that on. It's probably not going to focus at that. So, But you can see there's an end piece that fits on that. So I'd say there's a good chance that that has... Uh, okay, yes, you're seeing the uh, little drilled out bits there. So um, on some, not all, probably the obliterator larger ones, but again, even on the Melton, no. So uh, combination, I would hazard a guess at. Uh, let's just put that to one side and get back here. Um, right, okay. Where are we at? Well, um, I think we've been broadcasting for an hour and 10 minutes now. So unless there are any other questions, hopefully you've found it useful. Um, if you do have any questions, pop over to the Facebook group. You can always drop me the questions there. So that's Wargamer Online Community. Um, if not, I'm going to thank everybody for coming along today, answer, uh, asking a few questions. Hopefully you found it useful and we will see you all again soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe, will you? Please. Thank you. Bye. Oh, how do I actually stop this? Like that.